Yo guys, before we jump into today's video, I want to let you know that we are having a restock slash drop on the Boston site. We did completely restock the masks. Those were a very, very hot item. They sold out right away last time. And then we do have a full new run of air fresheners, some new stickers, and you do still have some t-shirts, tank tops, and shorts in stock. 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time this upcoming Friday. First thing down in the description box below. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So yesterday, Bobby and I made some good progress on the new Duramax. Today, I wanna make way more progress. So what we need to do is get the actual box, the bed of the truck off. It's all unbolted. It's loose. It's ready to go. I'm gonna try to do it myself with my engine hoist. If that's not gonna work, I'm gonna have to call up some people, my brothers. After that, I wanna work on the suspension. So let's get the truck cleaned up, get the bumper out of here, get all the tools picked up, get this box hopefully off the truck, and we can move on from there. All right, so here's the plan. Not sure if it's gonna work. Of course, it's gonna lift the bed. I'm just worried about this arm right here not coming out far enough to even reach the center of the bed. So let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. We got the box off. Now I gotta figure out what the heck I'm going to do with this thing. Obviously I don't want it crowding up the shop, but I feel like we could definitely sell the right box side. It's literally perfect condition. So I don't want to throw the whole thing away. So this is how she looks with no box on it at all. I do want to clean all this up and potentially throw down some black paint on the frame. It's a little bit crusty, a little bit dirty, so that'd be nice. I would pressure wash it right now, but the pressure washer that we bought about two weeks ago already broke. I did see some of you guys' comments saying that you've had that same one and it broke on you, so we do need to pick up a new pressure washer before we can do anything with the frame. Before we run any errands, I'm going to bring the truck up to the PDR shop. There's a PDR guy that I've been using for years and years, and he's hopefully within drivable distance without getting pulled over, because this truck's probably illegal right now with no taillights. Should be able to take back roads all the way there, and I'm gonna see if he can fix this dent on the cab. The only part of it that's really noticeable is this right here. I don't think the rest of it you can really see at all. So let's hope he can get that all fixed up. Total frustration. Yeah, it's just one of those areas. Can't do much. Alrighty. No, I get the same thing in certain vehicles. Well, guys, it was worth a shot. He said there's nothing that he can do. I may go to a few other places, try to find someone else that would be willing to give it a shot because I feel like it could come out. I know it's gonna be tough, but I think it could be done. Right now, I'm gonna jump in the M3 and go pick up some parts. So we're gonna get a new leaf spring. As you can see, that one's fairly bent. See if they have a new shock at the same time and I need to get two new U-bolts for the leaf spring as well. All right, so we're at Spot Things right now to pick up all of the OEM parts that we need to get this truck back on the road, suspension wise. And we also just had the first problem with the BMW. So the car, I'm sitting here idling, everything's going good, making a few phone calls and then the car goes into limp mode. So I reduced my RPM to four and a half thousand Engine malfunction pops up, engine operating at reduced output. Possible to continue to drive the caution and have the system checked. We've only put like maybe 600 miles on the car since we got it. I do have a feeling that it's most likely going to be throttle body actuators. Very common problem with the E92 as well as the rod bearing. So I, need, I know I need to do both of those eventually, probably sooner than later if this is actually what is causing the limp mode. All 
All right, so everywhere I call, everywhere I look for two U-bolts for my truck, they are all for a lifted truck with blocks. So my boy Elko has the factory ones off of his beautiful truck. So we're gonna snag those real quick, but there is a very, very special car here right now that I'm, I'm super, super geeked out about. This thing's insane. I need one of these cars so bad. Why? What do you mean why? Are you kidding me? It's, it looks pretty good. It's an NSX, bro. It's going to look nicer once I redo the tent. You're going to redo it all? Yeah, we're doing the full window. Dude, I'm not, I'm not excited about this curve. That looks hard. I want one of these so bad. This yeah, is like- They're pretty spendy. Yeah, these cars are yeah. super expensive. This is like one of my dream freaking JDM like higher end. It's like is this, this or super- you like from like childhood? Oh yeah, dude, yeah. this thing is insane. It looks so good. It's clean too. Who owns it? Do you know? I need one. What would you take? Oh my gosh, bro. Dude, I'd trade all my cars for one of these. Damn, it's beautiful. I don't know, what do you think? This or like an older Supra? What would you do? Ooh, I don't know. Supra's kind of more iconic. They're both very, very you know. iconic cars. Well, yeah, this one, uh, didn't Letty drive it? No, Mia drove it and like when they were rescuing Dometer and Fast Furious. Uh -huh. So yeah, this car, I've seen it quite a bit. And then yeah. black, I think this car is perfect in black. Drop a comment down below, guys. What would you take? An older NSX or older Supra? I don't know what I would do. They're yeah. both beautiful. It's actually pretty clean too. Mm -hmm. We'll start with the boys. All right, that car is very, very beautiful. Now, let's go check out another beautiful vehicle, which is Alex's truck. So this thing is very, very similar to how I want mine to be, except I don't think I'm gonna go quite this tall. This is an eight inch lift, and then these are 24 by 14. I just want mine to sit a little bit lower, a little bit smaller wheel, a little bit smaller tire. Small boy version of this, and then I might flare it as well because those tires stick out extremely far. Damn, another beautiful truck. You got all the nice stuff here today, bro. Dude. Uh I, I don't know. This I love beautiful. I love uh, GMCs, but these new fours they do look sick too. Yeah. I need a rough idea of what my Duramax is gonna sound like. So Alex is going to fire this thing up. I believe it's fully straight piped. I could be wrong. <laughs> that sounds really good. I need that. I need that. All right, boys, we are back in the shop now. On the way up here, the car went out of limp mode. I stopped, turned it off, started it back up, and it was no longer in limp mode. So I am gonna go ahead and scan it real quick. We did pick up the leaf. We did pick up the U-bolts. Unfortunately, could not find a shock, so truck is still drivable without a shock. Ideally, obviously, you want one on there, but it's not 100% necessity. Let's scan the M3 and see how many Euro problems that we got going on. So they're all still the same codes as before when you originally got this car. Secondary air pump and bank to O2 sensor. Kind of odd that the car did go in limp mode for a little bit, but it's out of limp mode now. So obviously we should fix those issues that it has, but at least it's still drivable. All right, let's get this thing fixed up. So I'm thinking if we just jack up this side of the truck, like on the frame up there, get this wheel off the ground, get all of the tension off of the leaf, unbolt it there, take the other U-bolt off, unbolt it up front. Shouldn't have to remove the wheel and shouldn't have to do anything crazy. It should be a pretty straightforward job now that the box is off. We have much better access to get this leaf off. Okay, so this is the old leaf we just pulled out. That is what it looks like. And that is what it's supposed to look like. As soon as you get this guy in, this thing should drive 100% straight, provided 
our frame isn't bent, which I think we would see right now with the box off, but I don't see anything weird going on at all. All right, boys, we got it all finished up. I think it is perfect now. I'm not gonna know until we drive it or at least get an alignment or something. I don't think there's any sort of like adjustment. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section below, but being that it's just a straight axle, there's no adjustment anywhere. If it's still sideways, we probably have bigger issues, but I think we should be good. I'm going to clean up the shop a little bit. Let's go drive the truck around the block, make sure it drives straight, make sure the steering wheel is straight because there's no front end damage. So technically we should be good. And then I want to bust out our new cheapo pressure washer and see if that one works any better or lasts longer than the old one. Let's go on a little rip around the block and see how this thing drives. It appears that this thing is driving 100% perfectly straight. Uh, definitely a huge relief off my shoulders. I was very worried that we're gonna have worse issues than it appeared but seems like we're good to go earlier today at elko we were kind of messing around with this truck there's so many little things on this truck that i don't even know about like the pedals move apparently i don't know how it works but it has remote start which is dope there's a little button over here that pulls in the mirrors that's pretty cool so many little tiny things and features with this truck that i don't even know about yet and it just makes me love this thing even more really really excited we went with this exact truck also real quick i have seen a few comments why don't you just lift the truck right now stop messing around with like stock u-bolts stock leaves the reason for that is because the lift that i'm getting is currently a four week four to six week wait so it'll be over a month before the lift even is supposed to show up hopefully it comes early but i don't want this truck to just be completely torn apart for a month so especially for the little amount of work that it needed to get it to drive straight and we have to drive this truck to go get the new box so i'm sure that i'm really curious to see if this remote start works i don't know how to use it apparently hmm. yeah i'll have to do some research on that i cannot get it to work now that we have the box off and we're going to have it off for a little bit i do want to go ahead and clean all of this up so let's get out the pressure washer the new pressure washer we just picked up let's see how good it works get all this dirt blown off here and if it's still pretty crusty i might end up painting the frame on this truck She is a leaker right out of the box. Definitely not the best first impression, but we'll probably end up using this pressure washer one single time and trying to find something better, something good that will last us a lifetime.
so my camera died but this here is what we ended up with it's a lot better it's a lot cleaner but still honestly it's kind of crusty i feel like for 2015. i'm guessing they must use a lot of salt in montana but now that it's all cleaned up i feel like we can slap some coating on it which may be tomorrow's project of course it'd be a lot easier to get done while the box is off so get a nice coating on there let it dry and then we can go about finding a box i did end up cleaning the entire frame all the way from the front under the truck to the front wheels so we can get all of that coated maybe tomorrow if we have time as you can see i already have the pressure washer box back up this thing is the biggest piece of junk i've ever used in my life 100 bucks get what you pay for i need to stop screwing around i just need to find one solid pressure washer that's going to last me a long time so that is what i'm gonna do tonight i'll show you guys if i end up finding something here locally i'll show you guys what i get if not, we're just gonna have to get, honestly, we might have to get another temporary one and just go find something online that's super nice, place an order, and hopefully the temporary one lasts the week or two it takes to get the new one in. Quick little update on the press washer. I was not able to find anything local that I thought would be any better than what we than what we've ran. So I found, I think I found a really nice one online. They're about 400 bucks, but I'm gonna go ahead and order that up and hopefully it's better than what we've been having in the past. I feel like the, I feel like this channel is slowly becoming a pressure washing review channel, but I'll definitely update you guys when that pressure washer shows up. I want a really nice one. The reason I don't go gas is because it's going to be wall mounted inside the shop. And of course this winter when it's super cold out, you can't have, I don't want the door open, letting all the heat out as we are cleaning cars and whatnot. So that's the only reason I don't go gas. If that wasn't the situation, if I wasn't trying to do that, I would definitely just pick up a uh, gas one much more reliable than the electric ones that we've been buying. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you tomorrow.